We are now joined by Mr. Douglas Flint. He is Group Chairman of HSBC Holdings and the speaker at this year's St. Gallen Symposium. Mr. Flint, thank you very much for granting us some of your precious time. My pleasure. Your session at this year's St. Gallen Symposium is entitled Self-Serving or Socially Valuable? Is it too late to make the case? In your opinion, have ethics and finance really parted ways? No, I don't believe so. But what I do believe that is really important that the industry of which I'm, I'm a member takes more time to demonstrate to society that what it does is socially valued because society has, for reasons that are entirely understandable given the crisis that we've come through, asked the question that, that you've just posed and said, is there something fundamentally wrong? Now, those of us in the industry believe that there's an element of misunderstanding, but also understand that our industry has, in many ways, let people down. Um, and, and that we need to demonstrate, not by words, but by actions, that the, the role we perform in terms of protection and security and reliability and record keeping and money transmission and investment and trade flows and, and all the things that are inherent in a, a proper functioning financial system serving you know, a, a, an efficient economy are what drives the organization and demonstrating that at a, a, a customer by customer, small business by small business, larger business by larger business uh, way will begin to re-establish trust in the industry that has sadly taken a, a significant dent. Before becoming group chairman, you used to be executive director risk and regulation of HSBC Holdings. Would you consider, consider yourself to be a risk taker? Why or why not? I was never a risk taker and, and indeed I think it's very important to, uh, to understand that risk is done properly, is about understanding the parameters of outcomes. If you understand, you know, you, know it, you could lose 10, you could make 5 and you're happy with that outcome based on the range of probabilities, then you're taking a measurable risk and you've assessed it and you've decided that the returns are appropriate. What no institution should do, financial or industrial or, or, or service industry, what no industry should do is simply make an investment, make a financial commitment where they have no idea of what the range of outcomes is. And I think you can, you know, getting back to your first question in a way, I think you can say that one of the failings within our industry in the crisis was that the, the range of outcomes that were, was believed to be possible was only a very small subset of the range of downside events that, that, that eventuated. People didn't understand fully, clearly with hindsight, the range of outcomes that they were accepting. So, so risk is all about properly understanding the range of outcomes and then determining whether on the balance of probabilities it's economic to accept that range. So it's not about risk avoidance, it's about understanding the range and the probabilities within the range as best as you can. You'll never get it right 100% because if you did it wouldn't be risk. HSBC is one of the world's leading and largest banking and financial services organizations. Even though dealing with company valuations is your daily business, would you agree that there is too much emphasis on the financial performance of companies? I think it's a very important element, but you're absolutely right, it's not the, it's not the only element. I mean, we have a responsibility, a broadest responsibility to our customers, to our staff, um, to the, 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 the regulatory and political community that effectively uh, sets the framework under which we operate and to society more generally in terms of being the intermediation mechanism through which the transmission of financial policy is affected. So we have a very broad range of, of responsibilities and our success comes partly from financial economic returns but partly from whether society meets its broader goals in terms of shaping the society that it has set out to achieve. What is the general mood of the participants at this year's symposium with regard to the development of the global economy in the near future? I think at, at all these type of events, and this, this one too, there's a balance between uh, a nervousness about the, the imbalances and the risks and the, 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 uh, the particular issues that exist around the world today in terms of 
fiscal deficits, um, imbalances in trade between countries, uh, indebtedness, uh, and so on, and optimism about the emergence of some powerful new markets and, and, and countries in, in the emerging markets, and about the uh, contribution that technology will make to the betterment of all our lives going forward. And there's a whole range of, of, of opportunities that we're only beginning to understand the full uh, spectrum of. So, you know, there's a, there's, there's a real excitement about some of the things that, that can happen and a, a recognition there are some obstacles to get out of the way to get to the, the opportunities uh, or to take best advantage of the opportunities that one can see. So like risk, there are two sides of the equation and we need to manage both. All right. What are then the emerging risks which the leaders of tomorrow will have to face? I think, the, the, you know, the biggest issues that the leaders of tomorrow are going to have to uh, reflect upon are, are, are just how to balance uh, in, in a sustainable way um, the economic growth, the social aspirations, the demographic challenges of aging populations, the historic legacies of um, pension and health care um, that, that were calibrated with growth assumptions that appear very different from today's. And I, you know, I think the, the big challenge facing future generations is that the future was calibrated around growth assumptions in the mature economies that today seem quite optimistic relative to uh, current expectations. And addressing those, dealing with them, overcoming them, um, I think will be the biggest challenge for the leaders of the future. Mr. Flynn, thank you very much for your time and your statements. Enjoy your stay here at the St. Gallen Symposium. My pleasure. Thank you very much.